a black teenager. And I have something to say. I'm only young right now. I'm only a child today. But soon, I'll be a leader in this world. Soon, I'll be writing this story. I may look like a child. But my mind is so much more. This is Black America. And this is Black America. I'm very aware and conscious of my color in society. Bertram Lee is a freshman at Haverford College in Haverford, Pennsylvania. Tuition is $38,000 a year. The school boasts four Nobel laureates, and students play croquet on manicured lawns. In a student body of nearly 1,200, there are 98 blacks. Even in this idyllic setting, Lee feels the tensions of race in America. Sometimes you wear fitted hats, you don't wear it straight like a baseball cap. And they're like, don't be offended, but you know, are, are you a thug or a gangster or something? I'm like, what? I look like Carlton Banks. His grandfather was a prominent judge in Baltimore. His late father, a businessman, co-owned the Denver Nuggets. His mother is a top lobbyist on Capitol Hill. Lee says she instilled in him a love for his race. Black is beautiful, man. Black is beautiful. People don't say that enough. Bertram Lee is black and affluent in America. He says that means he straddles two worlds and two sets of expectations. From blacks he hears... You're rich. You a rich boy. You don't understand anything about what we go through or what the struggle is. And from whites... You're either an affirmative action case or you're here because you're playing a sport. Dr. Carlotta Miles has known Bertram Lee all his life. She's a renowned psychiatrist in Washington, D.C. Do you think most Americans have no clue that privileged, wealthy, well-connected black people exist in decent-sized numbers? We're invisible. Why? Because we don't match the stereotype. The stereotype for black Americans is poverty, failure, victimization, and mediocrity. These are great. Dr. Miles, a mother of three, emphasizes success in her home with a family hall of fame. The hall is covered with photographs dating back to the 1850s. That's my dad and his colleagues. These are all doctors. And uh, that's Grandpa Henry. Basically made a fortune before the Civil War. This is my beloved, beloved grandmother. These people all had graduate degrees at the time when most people didn't have a college degree. Achievements made despite the racism that existed then and now. This was our 23rd year. 23 years ago, Dr. Miles created the Tuxedo Ball. Actually, this tells you. A place for privileged black children to mingle and make professional connections. Bertram Lee believes it will help his future political career. You could find yourself a job, an internship, opportunity, advice. You're talking to people who generally are amazing at what they do. They're successful. It's so hard to find that, especially like being out in the world. You have to be black and you have to be wealthy. You don't have to be wealthy. You just have to be a part of the, the group. Affairs like these exclude many, says Darren Walker, a vice president at the Rockefeller Foundation. He spent his career studying race. Many people in the African-American community react angrily because one part of our community seems quite comfortable adopting the exclusive practices of the majority community that for many years kept us out. I don't think the tuxedo wall should be vilified. It's doing something for the privileged children whom people think don't need anything. What they see is exclusion. What they see is elitism. 
most of us are tremendously active doing things for needy children as well. That afternoon before the gala, there are several black cultures. A day of seminars. If I don't believe in myself, how can I convince you to be my girlfriend? How could I convince you to give me a job? Get your report together. Leadership comes from... In a seminar called Pathways to Leadership, Bertram Lee spoke about his elite New England high school. We'd had many issues with uh, diversity. Um, one of my teachers in my class actually called me a nigger in class. He said, Ma, there was an incident. One of the teachers used the N-word in the classroom. Lee's mother, Laura Murphy, was hurt. The sense of anguish you feel when your child has that hurt sound in his voice. And I was really pleased when he told me that he was going to organize a forum at the headmaster's house. What's the lesson in that? Do something. Do you let it in? Do you let them tell you who you are? No. That evening, the big event. <laughs> it's a magical night with historic precedents. From W.E.B. Du Bois at the 1910 Midwinter Assembly to Carlotta Buffy Gordon now known as Dr. Miles. Affluent blacks have been passing on the legacy of success for well over a hundred years. What the tuxedo ball reminds me personally is that you cannot settle for mediocrity. We mobilize our kids to go out and make a difference. My idea of blackness may not be what society says or what other people say blackness is. I can't help that I was born in the place that I was born in. I can only hope to make the world a better place from that.